Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So uh, you know, so we're going to do one wine, and I'm going to change things up a little bit. Uh, we've done, I don't know, probably a couple hundred episodes where I'm doing two or three wines every single episode. You know, I used to do a little educational segment. Now I'm just trying to keep the education as part of the show. Um, just kind of in, in the effort of being able to produce more shows or to produce shows. Um, uh, multiple shows in, in one setting instead of doing two wines per show, do one wine per show. That way, for the same amount of time, I'm producing more shows. It allows me more study time uh, for uh, the advanced exam and the competition coming up in August, uh, assuming I get you know my applications accepted to be in the competition. But anyway, um, so uh, I think I'm going to do some one wine at a time for the most part. Now, a few more and I don't know, three or four more episodes, I'm going to do a two wine episode because same producer will compare the two wines. But in general, I'll do like one wine at a time. Also, um, while it would seem like it would be smart to, uh, not smart, it would seem to be, you know, uh, good to coincide the week, whatever I'm studying, since I do record multiple shows in one day, it's kind of hard for me to like stick, uh, strictly stick with whatever I'm studying this week um, or try to do it. So these episodes are kind of like extra study or future study um, on things that I haven't gotten to yet. And just, you know, just a little break from the monotony of, of keeping your nose to a book or to a computer screen. All right. So um, let's see what else. That's it. Just uh, working on getting my stuff done and, uh, Let's see, this is, this is, the, so next week, so this particular week, at least for the show, um, I should be up in, I will be up in Austin for a master class on Spanish wine. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I believe uh, Devin Broly is uh, teaching that along with maybe somebody else, I'm not really sure. Um, so I'm looking forward to hanging out with some Austin peeps and other people around Texas to uh, get some Spanish wine knowledge. Um from a master, and uh, who knows, I might end up having a tasting session that day. I hope so. Speaking of tasting, I did a tasting today, as in the actual date, and uh, uh, I did pretty good. Now, would I have definitely passed in an advanced exam situation? I think I would have, but there's definitely some holes in the grid, or not holes, but maybe some specificity that I didn't do that I think I probably could have been better on. Um, but of the six wines, I got four um, correct. I was off a little bit on vintage. Uh, one, I was off quite a bit on vintage, but I should have guessed more. But in the situation I was in, I keep forgetting that Max's does occasionally have older vintage wines. So I sometimes I psych myself out that they can't have anything more than about three or four years old. Um, it was actually a, well, technically 10-year-old wine now because it was 2006, Barolo. But I did say it was a Barolo. Um, and one of them completely got wrong. And the other one, um, I had the right grape, I just had, didn't have the right area. So I, I would have gotten partial points for that. So I, I felt good with the tasting compared to some other ones I've done recently where I just crashed and burned uh, on some stuff. So plus it doesn't, doesn't hurt that I told uh, the place I was at, you can only use wines from these areas. So they weren't like giving me some crappy, not crappy, some crap. <laughs> some some untestable wines from other parts of the world. How about that? Um, all right, so let's get into the wine. Um, so where I work on the day job, uh, I uh, one of my servers was telling me that he was at the local uh, grocery store chain, and he you know was just walking down the aisle, and he, he saw a Gruner Veltliner. 
uh, in the aisle. Well, that's not a, typically a, a wine that you're going to find in an ordinary HEB. Um, maybe where I bought this one, you'd find it. Uh, it was kind of hard to find because, one, well, this is a Hungarian one, so there is no Hungary section, no, nor there was an Austria section, but it was near Germany. So I should have looked in the German section a little bit harder. But anyway, uh, he was like, oh, dude, there's a like, Gruner Veltliner for like eight, nine dollars. I picked up like three bottles. He doesn't quite talk like that, but um, he picked up one for like eight or nine dollars. I was like, cool, man. You know, I'm looking for good value wines. And uh, so we asked the guy, do you have any Gruner Veltliner from Austria? Because I just assumed it was an Austrian wine that my uh, employee had. And the guy's, yeah, we have these. And they were like, 18 bucks, 12, 13, 14 dollars. I'm like, no, nah, man, that's not the one I'm looking for. And then I, I saw one for like $8.95. And things were a little bit jumbled on the bottom shelf, but it was this wine. Uh, I thought it might have been the ferment. I almost bought the ferment. It was regular dry ferment, but that was like 19 bucks. I was like, nah, we'll buy that another time. Besides, I got tons of wine to do anyway, plus tons of wines to ship ship to me before it gets super freaking hot in Texas. So trying to buy I have plenty of underground cellar but I'm trying to get myself up to 12 bottles again with uh Psalm Slug so I can get the next shipment and then I can spend the summer buying some more uh testable wines that's my goal is to only buy wines from them that are testable instead of just like you know oh that looks cool but I think I have a few cool wines in in the my um account anyway so I bought this wine uh he told me that this was not the wine that he bought but I mean it's a nine dollar Grunewald Leader. So this is the Groovy. So if you had watched one of my super early episodes, I do think it was before episode 100, um, I titled a episode called Groovy Baby, but I spelled it G-R-U-V-E, E maybe? Anyway, so this one's spelled G-R-O-O-V-E, Groovy. That's the name of the wine or the company. Um, it is a uh, Hungarian uh, Grunewald Leader. They even have the little... Uh, a little uh, sweetness indicator. It says dry. Actually, I shouldn't even look at the back. I just assumed it was dry. Um, from the Panon, I have no idea how the Hungarians pronounce it, but the Panon region of Hungary, that is in a southern part of the country, uh, kind of a little west of center. And uh, this is imported by Quintessential Wines. I can't really find anything about the actual winery, but at Central Market for $8.95, it's a 2012 vintage. Um, Grunewald Liener is mainly from Austria. Then after that, Slovakia, Czech Republic are the next most plantings. Um, and then after that, it's, you know, got some in Hungary, uh, some elsewhere in the New World. Uh, there's actually apparently some experimental plantings in France and maybe a little bit in Germany here and there. Um, it is called, and I'll probably butcher the name, Zold Velt Veltlini. It wasn't hard to actually say that. Zold, by Zold, Z O with umlaut, L D, Zold Veltlini in Hungarian. I don't know if it says Hungary. Hungarian. I'm not like you're going to see my notes anyway. So let's uh, check it out. Uh, I'm going to try to do every attempt to um, stick with the whole four ish minutes of going through here. What I need to do is I, I looked at the episodes, prior episodes, and I saw that a lot of my little commentary during the grid was the reason why I'm running out of time. Because today, I finished all six wines with three seconds to spare. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure I didn't. I, I think I skipped it. Maybe on a couple wines, I skipped a couple things here and there. But I still have the sheet in front of me because um, I really haven't done a whole lot of practice like I should be. Um, so I don't have the grid 100% memorized where I can just go da 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 But I'm, get, I'm getting better at it. So... I know the clock starts when you touch the wine, but, you know, whatever. All right, so let's try to do this. Uh, I know it's kind of boring to do it, but it is an exercise. You know, maybe at some point in time I'll skip doing this exercise and just kind of do my old descriptors because, you know, it's just it's a review, right? Have fun with your descriptors. All right, here we go. Ready, set, go. All right, this wine is a white wine, no evidence of any sediment or gas. It is clear. Uh, bright, star bright. Uh, it is a, well, you, well, you know, there is evidence of stuff in the glass. This is, a, so here we go. I'm already, I'm already, 
pause. I'm already commentating. This is a screw cap, and yet it looks like I have... I don't know what I have in there. We're going to dump that. And a little more rinse. This is a clean glass. That's what I meant to do is get the little attachments I found on Amazon for um, dishwashers. So these glasses in our dishwasher are too tall to put in the top part. You have to lean them down. You got to lean them like that because I just put shit on there. Um, oops, sorry. Hope iTunes didn't catch that. Um, as I, you know. Anyway, so they have these little things. That they're, they're purple. I can't remember the name of them, but some guy invented this version. He bend it and it clips clips to this. You put the glass upside down in the bottom part. Cleans glass a little bit better. So instead of hand hand washing the glasses. Um, Definitely better than how we've been doing it. Okay, so let's get back to the wine. Um, all right. It is a yellow color. Um, it does go out to a watery rim, but definitely, I, I was told not to say gold, but man, that really does a golden. A little bit golden. Um, no extraction, no staining. Uh, viscosity is non-existent. Thought the glass was a lot cleaner than it is. Um, you know, this is where an absolutely clean glass really helps because I can't really see the viscosity on it. Viscosity is high. Okay. All right. Um, on the nose. It is of moderate intensity, is clean, no, no evidence of any faults. I already know it's a 2012, so therefore it's youthful. But I would say it was youthful. There's a waxiness, a paraffin uh, aroma to it. Cantaloupe rind. Some melon. Pretty much, it's very moderate, really actually it's a light intensity, so not a whole lot. I don't really get any floral, no no evidence of any earth, at least organic earth. There's a clean list to it that I would associate with rock, wet rock. And no evidence of wood, however, and I have no idea there's any wood. On the palate, it is dry. Um, there's a little bit of, it's, I always call it a medium bodied wine. Um, no tannins, acid is medium plus. Uh, alcohol is low, um, which we'll get to that later. Uh, maybe medium minus low. Um, there's a little bit of a acidity, you know, acidic grip to it, not a tannic grip, um, like a, a chalkiness. So it says a, a minerality, inorganic minerality. It's very tart on the palate. Um, I get peach. I don't really get the melon anymore, but there's a peach to it. Um, peach, peach skin, ripe peach. Um, I'm supposed to get white pepper. I don't get any white pepper. Um, no, I don't send any wood. Though you know, I don't know if there's any wood, but I don't feel there's any wood. Um, it's a moderate finish. Um, it's a, it's a, it's balanced. I know I don't have a lot of confidence in that, but it's, it's balanced. It's, but there's nothing, nothing that really dominates anything. But there isn't a whole else lot in the wine, so I would call this a medium quality producer. And uh, then from there on, you go old world, new world. And I had 10 seconds left. So we know that I did not, I probably wasn't going to finish that. So what's the rest of my assessment on the wine? Hey, it's $9. It's a very easy drinking uh, porch wine. Um, I would have no problem drinking this. Um, there's a sweet tart. 
uh, element to it. Um, I, I know I call it peach, but it's really, I don't want to use a generic lemon lime, but there's, there's a sweet tartness to it that I can't really identify anything other than I had got a little bit of peach. Um, there should be white pepper. I don't really get white pepper. That's one of the, it's one of the characteristics of Gruner. Now, because this is a $9 Gruner, um, very likely this would not be in an exam situation because you want at least a moderately good producer because they're going to produce wines that are recognizable, uh, are true to the form of the grape and of the area. Plus, this is a Hungarian Gruner. So, Gruner itself should have white pepper. It's one of the key markers. That's the only thing it has, but that's one of the things when you get, oh, white pepper. Oh, and it's a white wine. And it has all the other characteristics. It's probably Gruner. Okay, that's that little secret. Um, that it's not Pinot Grigio or Sauvignon Blanc or anything else or Albarino, you know, um, Gewurztraminer. I mean, they a lot of these grapes can taste alike, especially when you're in the nine dollar range. Um, but I don't think I would confuse this with a um, Pinot Grigio necessarily. I might confuse it with a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, however, I don't get any Sauvignon Blanc characteristics. I don't get any saltiness any minerality of that sort, seashell, I probably wouldn't call it Albarino. In, in a regular setting, I probably would be confused because I don't have a lot of Gruner experience, plus not getting the white pepper. I would I would just call it some generic white wine from the New World or something like that. But, I mean, it's pleasant. It's a good summer wine as we're getting closer to summer. Um, and I almost just popped this while watching the basketball game tonight when we got home from dinner. And I was like, no, man, I'm going to review it. I mean, I need some wines that are not like $20 plus dollars to review. So, I mean, if you find this groovy, get it, man. It's, 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 I don't want to use the word tasty, but it's pleasant. It's not going to piss you off. It's, um, it's going to be refreshing. Okay. It's really tart, though. I'd probably rather have a little bit of food with it. So let's talk about a little food. So, I mean, we'll just put it out there. I mean, of course, there's lots of seafood options there. Um, but if I had some, like, uh, some fruit going with it, like a fruit salad, um, if I had some, like, cheeses, maybe some uh, cheeses with a little bit of salt to it, that would help. I mean, I don't get any minerality, like, salt, saltiness to it, but it'd go rate right some, like, salty-type uh, cheeses. Um, some light cheeses. That'd be good, man. Salad. You know, you get a nice little vinaigrette or, you know, nice, a nice uh, dressing on there. Maybe a little, little raspberry vinaigrette or habanero, pineapple, blah, 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 whatever, mango vinaigrette. It'd be, it'd be good. It'd be a good time. I like it. If you see it, get it. All right. So that's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, thank you for stopping by. Leave comments below, either on YouTube or at the website or wherever else the video's on. Uh, check me out on Roku, TiVo somehow. Hey, you, you verse, you know, uh, uh, AT&T bought, bought DirecTV. I'm um, wondering if, and they're not going to do Uverse anymore. Well, they're not, they're not putting any more money into Uverse. It still exists. That's what we have. So you can't use TiVo with Uverse, but you can use TiVo with DirecTV. So... Maybe at some point we'll switch to satellite TV. I don't know. Satellite TV sucks when it rains. Um, don't flame me on it. It's true. Okay. Um, but I could get TiVo and I can see whether or not you can find me on TiVo. Um, podcasts, whatever, iTunes. Go to iTunes. Leave me a great, uh, leave me a five star rating that helps with it. Uh, I am on the new and noteworthy for, for food, for food video podcasts. And I really wish Apple would get this act together on trying to find video podcasts. It's really, you have to like cheat the system, you have to game the system just to find just video where it's not audio only. But um, there's no direct way to do it. And I can never remember how I did it the last time. All right, so that's going to do it. Uh, leave, leave comments. I'll have links below for quintessential wines. Uh, leave, uh, hit the button over here to donate. Friend me up over here on the social medias. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.